Okay, I've got a question. What do a Santa 5K, a candle mishap, and a lengthy list of resolutions have in common? Well, somehow, believe it or not, they are all key plot points in 2023 sealed with a list. We've got a lot to talk about, Josh. We do, Jennifer. We'll unwrap it all on this episode of Do You Watch What I Watch? So we open to a very festive workplace holiday party in the Big Apple. So we're in New York City and our female lead Carly gets yet another coffee mug from her secret Santa co-worker. The same one she's had now for three years running. So we get early on. She is in quite literally a rut. Poor thing. We've all been there, haven't we? That's right. But it was a little weird because was it Secret Santa or Secret Admirer? Oh. He he oogled at her a little bit more. There was a little oogling. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that too. Anyway, her boss swings by super seriously, which is a little weird thing to do at a holiday party, pulls her into an office and swiftly informs her she will not be getting the promotion that she was hoping for. Instead, the boss's son, Wyatt, is. So Merry Christmas, Carly. Ooh, boy. Why do we always, why are we hiring and firing at the holidays? I know it's the end of the calendar year, but is that a thing people do? I guess. Not at our place. Yeah, I don't know. either. Anywho, she feels some sort of way about it, and she unpacks it all with her friend while strolling a cute little holiday market that looks to be in some sort of alley in New York City. Over some mulled wine, her friend makes her promise to make some big changes to step toward a brand new life while she's away for the year being a fancy sommelier. Carly, feeling inspired, goes back home and she pens a lengthy list of resolutions. And we get a montage that steps us forward a full year. So the list gets buried on her bedside table. So she's not made much progress. Did you like how this sort of was set up jennifer i did it's not something we always get we'll get a flash forward or a step back in time a la a built more christmas but the i liked the uh, passage of time with the magazines that she's too busy to read just kind of stacking up i can uh, i can identify with that as well i have currently have um some magazines downstairs that have not touched i feel like i have 17 books on my bedside table that i keep telling myself i'm going to get to someday but alas no. Maybe the week between Christmas and New Year's. I've got a lot of plans to throttle down that week between Christmas and New Year's. <laughs> I'm <laughs> filling it with so much stuff to do that it may not be as restful as I mm. think in my head. Stay it's mammoth hours in the day. Good. <laughs> Meantime, Wyatt, who is totally a spoiled brat, is running late for work. Servants are taking care of his every need, and he hops in the back of a town car and, well, finally... Heads off to work. It's clear we are not supposed to like him at this point, and I certainly do not. Carly finds out her fancy friend is heading back to New York City after her year away and can't wait to hear how Carly's life is better. Oopsie. It's not. Yet. (laughs) Stay tuned. (laughs) Wyatt shows up to work, and the two are super oil and water. They don't get along. He's lazy, and she's annoyed by that, basically. She gets home, she digs out her old box of notions because she sews, she's really into fashion design and all of that. And in the process, she finds her big list of resolutions. So she's conflicted, she hasn't made much progress, but she immediately gets her chance to make some progress the next day at work. A major order of t-shirts is super low quality, which is basically her job and why it's her boss, and so they're in charge of quality control. And it turns out, what looks a lot like Bobo Walmart is mad. But Carly, seeing the opportunity here, takes the fall for it when it was really Wyatt's mistake. So she quits her job, or maybe is sort of fired. I guess she was fired, I think. Fired? I think she was laid off because they mentioned a severance package. Uh And in my mind, if you're fired, there's, I don't know if this is true, no severance, but if you're laid off, maybe there's a severance package. Hmm. Anywho, she's out of a job. Yeah. Yeah. So that was on her to-do list, was to not be working there anymore. So, yay. Wyatt and his dad have a little bit of a heart-to-heart, and Wyatt's like, this was actually my fault. And dad lays down an ultimatum to Wyatt. Either start caring or you're cut off, which, thankfully, 
I was glad to hear because I just did not like Wyatt out of the yeah, game. Yeah, Wyatt was think? giving like Richie Rich vibes. Mm, <laughs> like it yes. was very <laughs> there was like, reference to brat, every trust fund. Yeah, yeah, every rich entitled man trope that they could throw at it. They definitely hammered home with him. He doesn't even decorate his own Christmas decor. He hires people to do it. Okay. Mm. Anywho. Carly gets a pep talk from her 70-year-old roommate, who I thought was super cute in this movie. The doorbell rings, and, oh, it's Wyatt. He says, thanks for taking the fall for me. It's a little bit flirty. And he says he's going to some hip party, I think in the meatpacking district, whatever. She of sees course. It, right, yeah. She sees an opportunity for adventure, which is also on her little checklist of resolutions. And before you know it, they are off. So we go to commercial. We're back from commercial break, and we are at the aforementioned raging party for just a few seconds, thankfully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it was some sort of EDM rave version of a Christmas song. It was just hands in the air. Hands in the air. Light yeah. sticks. Yeah, the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. It was bad. Then Carly wakes up with the aftermath in her bed, and I'm talking like confetti and all, which was... Yeah, I thought they were going to be together, and I was like, Hallmark? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. That would be on Lifetime. <laughs> yes, absolutely, in a bar. <laughs> yeah, they're thirsty The candlestick and Colonel Mustard. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, Wyatt wakes up from the same party at his place, yes, God forbid, and has to make his own coffee when he hears the servants have been instructed by his dad to not help him. Oh, whatever will he do? He blunders. They're hiding in the pantry. <laughs> I know, which was so funny because they, 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 they didn't know what to do. Anyway, he blunders his way on a really fancy cappuccino machine and clearly has no idea how to do anything for himself. So, okay. Carly shows up at Wyatt's house and gives him, rightly, a really hard time for paying someone to decorate for him. She says, it's impersonal, and I have to agree. She's not there to discuss decor, however. She wants his accountability for knocking out her resolution list. So she sort of strikes up this little budding friendship with him. First up, she's going to take up running. So he gives her a little workout she makes it four or five blocks and nearly passes out on a Christmas tree, which, okay, reminds him of his mother who passed away eight years ago. And here we go again. The bingo card around parents who have passed away this year is full. Let's move on. Let's find a new thing. I don't know I what it a, is. I need Hallmark to start putting some trigger warnings on these movies. Please. Okay? <laughs> Please. Because my gosh, but I did like, she kind of like landed, like Josh said, in the tree, in the tree lot. And she said something like, if I'm going to die, I want my last breath to smell like Christmas. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. Like there were these little quippy things. She there was were. very, very funny. I thought Quick so wit. too. And you're right. This script did have a lot of these little nugget quips kind of tucked in, which I thought mm -hmm. was a nice touch. Anywho, the ice is thawing a little bit between these two. So we're back from Christmas break. She's laid up with a bad muscle cramp. So she goes out running and she has a bad cramp in her leg. And he's, I should have said, we're back from commercial break, not Christmas break. I've got Christmas confused. break on the line, on the brain right now. We're just now. trying to get to Christmas break at this point. That's, I was like, that yeah. I feel like I missed part of the movie. <laughs> yeah, okay. Anyway, so I meant to say we're back from commercial break. There you go. Check anyway, them. she's yeah. laid up with bad muscle cramps. He's helping her with the closet cleanup that's also on her to-do list. Then he rubs her calf a bit, which is a bit familiar for friends, frenemies. This was intimate. It was this intimate. calf rubbing scene was, <laughs> I mean, we'll have to probably talk about them in the Watchies Awards, but it's up there for steamiest scene to, in my Steamiest scene. <laughs> yeah, right. Especially when he makes reference to her hamstring, and I was like, easy. Easy. Yeah. Leave her for Jesus. Come on now. <laughs> and meanwhile, their 70 year old roommates bringing her bananas. <laughs> I know. So great. Anyway, they unpack the why behind her resolution obsession. He asks her what she dreams about and she shows him her fashion designs. They make some lovey dovey eyes at each other before her roommate shows up with some bananas. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> She's there the next morning bullhorn in hand to wake him up at seven o'clock because she's helping him 
He's helping her. It's kind of a two-way street here. His dad is impressed that he's on time when he shows up to work. And Wyatt's house manager, what's her name? I don't know. Gerda or something? Gerda. I don't know. Gerda. 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 Anyway, yeah. No, he's that may have been the roommate. Mm. I don't know. Is helping Carly learn how to sew better, which I thought was kind of a sweet little thing. Yes. Wyatt shows up at Carly's house for what's billed as a rap party, but we quickly learn it can mean very different things in New York City. So it's actually wrapping presents, of course, this time of year for a toy drive, which is super sweet. So Wyatt lets it slip in talking to Carly's mom that Carly doesn't work with him anymore. This is their first time meeting, and oopsie they have to quickly cover because Carly hasn't had a chance to tell her mom that she's no longer employed. So, eh. Later, they discuss her upbringing in a family struggling with making ends meet, the dangers of dreaming, and her troubles with trust. This is like a lot. Kind of a therapy mm-hmm. appointment here happening. She asks Wyatt to be her friend, which is also on her list, by the way, and he says yes. So, mm-hmm. That was cute. Thawing. I did think it was Because she cute. said when you're little, you just go up to somebody and you say, will you be my friend? And when you're grown ups and adults, it's harder to do that. So she, at the end, like a couple scenes later, goes up to him and says, will you be my friend? And I thought that was cute. I did too. They decide to go look for a new place for him to live. He's going to move out of his dad's house, but they wind up posing as boyfriend and girlfriend for the realtor or for the apartment manager, or whatever. And it was kind of cute. Then we get a baking montage, like, what? I was so there excited. There haven't been that many this season. There really. haven't been. There haven't been. And I loved this. She's checking <laughs> off her grandmother's recipe, which she says takes two people. So the two of them have a great time making this gorgeous looking cake. And then a little bit later, they sit by the fireplace talking about her grandmother and his family drama, namely how his mother's death impacted the relationship with his father. She pulls out an old box of family ornaments that he's not been hesitant to do anything with, or that he has been hesitant to do anything with, but he doesn't really want to go there emotionally just yet. So he has his own work that he's doing. Good luck. God bless. Yes. Mm -hmm. The next day he is helping her run faster and he hires some kids to motivate (laughs) slash torment her. And what do you know? It works. Her friend... Oof, she's a little bit early back from her big Italy trip and they are gabbing about her job change and her mom hears the truth as they like saunter into her apartment. So now that's a problem she's going to have to deal with. Why well, was your mom in her apartment? Well, I think working on something related to the toy drive, maybe okay. the roommate was helping or something. That's a good okay. question. Yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. Because she needed to be there for the plot, Jennifer. (laughs) I know, but I just, it was a little weird to me, but okay. Yeah, no, you're right. It is weird. Yeah. Wyatt's at work. He's showing up, leading his team. He's being a better boss. And dad is mildly impressed. So, okay. Wyatt invites Carly and her friend to a sing and stroll, which is basically Christmas caroling. And it looks like a lot of fun in this little New York neighborhood. They sing Silent Night. Yeah. Yes. In different languages. Yes. I was impressed. I loved it. And dare I say the, so it's Wyatt's like childhood best friend and his wife, or I guess he was friends with both of them and the daughter um, invited them to this thing because they, you know, he, he's not the same Wyatt as he used to be anymore. No, he's not. And the little girl was singing and I thought she did a great job. Agreed. There's a Watchy Award for Best Kid Singer. Look out. There's some stiff competition this season with the amount of kids we've had singing. I'll let you present that award. (laughs) Yeah, but she was precious. And then the next guy was singing it in Spanish. And it was just really sweet and touching. And I I got warm and fuzzy. Good. So. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Well, (laughs) didn't get a Josh's crack hell on that one. Well, you you know. You just did the equivalent of there, there. Well, you know, you know, I'm glad it was a great moment for you. You know, for me, it's hard to get over the sound of children singing. And I know. And we don't have to share all the same touching moments, but I just thought it was funny the way you said it. Good. Good. <laughs> Good for, Good for you. you. Okay. <laughs> Continue, Josh. <laughs> I did have a bit of a sentimental moment coming up here because they pop by a food truck. 
They're having a cute little moment with the community, especially when Wyatt convinces Carly to read the Nutcracker to the kids. I thought this was really sweet and sentimental. Then his phone rings. He finds out he has the new apartment. Yay. Great. He's going to move out. So... Well, because he did the book thing because she, one of her resolutions was to re- to finish a book. And she was tackling War and Peace. And he's like, really? Like, maybe really, girl. kind of yeah, slow roll small. it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yes. He is very critical of her resolutions early on, but then he gets invested because I think he's starting to like her, which I thought was kind oh, of Oh, for sweet. sure. Yeah. Yeah. So Wyatt drops off his house keys to his dad and announces that he's moving out. Dad doesn't quite know how to show affection, but, you know, the ice is sort of thawing there. So yeah. Carly drops off a coffee maker to Wyatt's new place, which is a little callback to him not being able to figure out the cappuccino machine, which was sweet, and notices he doesn't have any Christmas decor. Problem solved. She brought it all, along with helper Gertie. And we get a montage full of stolen, slow-mo glances between the two of them. We're really ramping up the heat here. She mm-hmm. also brought that box of old ornaments And she encourages him to lean into his feelings around all of that, which he does. Good for him. Then, best part of this scene, I think, Wyatt's dad shows up at Carly's invitation and she slips out Mm -hmm. unannounced. She leaves to let them heal, which I thought was really classy. I love the way that they, they did that. Yeah. She goes home. Her mom is there noting how beautiful her dress design is. And they finally talk about her not having the job that was boring her in the whole nine yards. They reconcile, they hug, it's super sweet. Next morning, it's the big Christmas 5K in Central Park. There's a sign that reads cardio for cookies, and that's officially my new life motto, by the way. <laughs> and he went, Love that. I did too. Anyway, Carly runs this race. It's kind of cheesy but funny and she winds up actually winning the 5k which good for her then we're back at her place they're taking pictures of her dress design which the dress looks beautiful she's going to send it to all of the fashion houses in new york she's trying to get on as a fashion designer somewhere and oh no it catches fire on one of her roommate's fancy candles she is super bummed and starts questioning everything about her dreams Especially when Wyatt shows up with an invite to a fancy event that night. So she's just, she sort of, what is, what's a good way of putting it? She sort of like pulls the fire alarm and the escape hatch. She's like done with it all. It was. Well, she probably needed to pull a fire alarm in two more seconds because that dress was catching fire quick. Flammable. This was the oopsie doodle. It wasn't really. It was kind of a small oopsie doodle, not a real big oopsie doodle, right? Yeah, it, it was kind of unnecessary to me, but we had to have it, so here it is. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Wyatt's dad is talking with his son, and he asks him to work alongside him, basically someday to even take over the company and that whole thing, because he's been so impressive recently, but he says he can't because he's a changed man, thanks to the past few weeks he's had with Carly. Dad shows Wyatt this folder with memories from Wyatt's childhood and says he is the greatest achievement that he's ever had and apologizes if Wyatt ever doubted that. Very sweet scene here between these two. Wyatt's dad says Carly asked for her old job back, which sounds like a good thing, but Wyatt, knowing that it isn't a good thing for her, says Mm -hmm. he can't let that happen, and he hops a bus. Nice touch. To go and find her ASAP. So, turns out she's at the big toy giveaway and Wyatt somehow manages to show up dressed as Santa Claus with toys and merriment. And it's super cute. He says he believes in her. They all do. And she's suddenly warmed up. So she's over the whole oopsie doodle moment of it all. She apologizes. She found her faith again in her list and her resolution. She can do it. Well, the second, trying, the second she saw him come around the corner in that Santa suit, it was like every problem she had sort of disappeared. She's, she's, of course. Yes, of course, because time's almost up in this movie. <laughs> anyway, cut to New Year's Eve. So Christmas is over, and now we're a week later, New Year's Eve, and there's a big party at Wyatt's old place. All of the friends that we've met over the past 
one hour and 56 minutes at this point. <laughs> They're all mm -hmm. there. And Carly finally shows up in that big red dress that previously caught fire that she fixed, looking like $1.5 million, not even a million dollars. It's better than a million dollars, I think. Mm -hmm. And he gives her a hard time for needing to check the last box on her resolution list, which is taking an adventure. She says, I've got something in mind. And she plants quite the smooch. As we see fireworks off in the distance, list complete, fade to black. Okay, it is time for our gold or coal segment. If you're new to the podcast, go listen to other episodes, but we're glad you're here. We each bring three gifts to the pod. If there's more gold, it checks all the boxes. If there's more coal, it's mission not accomplished. And if it's a tie, it's just a meh. Read Christmas. Josh, I'm coming to you first. What did you think of this movie? I'm giving gold for the lead female in this this one, Carly. I loved that she was not the typical Hallmark leading lady, but it really mm -hmm. worked, I thought, with this storyline. It needed someone quirky to pull it off, and I mm -hmm. thought she had just the right amount of quirk that you found yourself cheering for her. I think mm -hmm. if other actresses had done this and it was sort of the typical, you would kind of be like, okay, move on. But I felt like her personality really made you want to watch her check the boxes on all of this. Agreed. And I will piggyback off of that. I'm going to bring some gold for the leads in general and their chemistry. Listen, I feel like, I don't need to think it back to all the other movies. But now that we're nearing the end of the season, I'm getting nostalgic for how far we've come and what all we've watched. It is up there for the most like believable relationship and the most like rooting, rootable relationship to me is what mm. I'm trying to say. Like, And maybe that is because we are led to believe they've known each other for over a year. So it's not just like this 48-hour, oh, no, I love you kind of thing that we love, but it's not terribly realistic. This felt more earned to me, so I will give it gold. More earned. You know, we love we love the word earned, and I'm going to use the word earned as I give more gold <laughs> here. I like that both of these characters had their own respective work to do. You know, we love a self-aware man, don't we, Jennifer? Mm -hmm. And we got we do. There's always this. room for improvement with everybody. Yep. Exactly. And I love that they leaned into that with his character and he wasn't just an accessory to her journey, right? They both mm -hmm. had arcs that I think we would agree both felt earned. <laughs> That's right. Stick it on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I will give more gold for their chemistry specifically. That leg massage scene. Foo. Hotty totty. <laughs> I just believed that they would keep smooching the night away on New Year's Eve and I was happy for them instead of like, what? You know. So there yeah. you go. Well, we got a lot of Official eye glances back and forth too. Like it was a very sort yeah. of intimate moment. Yeah. My last is going to be gold. I loved the B characters throughout here, including the roommate. I thought that they really made some good and interesting casting choices. It wasn't just a bunch of vanilla people. Every one of these mm -hmm. B characters seemed like they had their own story. You didn't get it, but you just sort of sensed that they had stuff to them that made them three-dimensional and Oftentimes these B characters can be very 2D, but I like that you got the sense that there was more to them than just sort of being accessories to the main plot. So gold. Yeah, I would totally watch a movie with his friends from the other town or the bestie that went to Italy. Like, give me that next year, Hallmark. Mm -hmm. I'll watch. Mm -hmm. uh, my last thing is a piece of gold. This is a sleeper surprise for me. Usually by this point in the season, I'm like, okay, yada, yada, you know, like the movies aren't as strong. But man, I was so delighted by this movie. It made me grin from ear to ear, and I will likely watch it again. I also like that it bridges the gap between Christmas and New Year's. It wasn't just a New Year's movie because we'd had those in the past, so those are fine. But this is like, I'm still in the Christmas feels, but I'm working my way towards the new year. So this is the perfect movie for this time of year. That's really a good point, Jennifer. And I think a sleeper surprise is the perfect way to describe this one. This one did not get a whole lot of promotion. 
this no. one was not getting a whole lot of buzz online. It just sort the of poster, like the official movie poster, was way late in the season before it way came. late. It just had like yeah. standard one stock photo for the longest time. Yeah, and and I'm with you. This one pleasantly surprised me in terms of the dialogue, the characters, the acting, all of it. It just really, I liked the story. I thought it really worked, and I. I would absolutely watch this one again because I would love to pick up on more of those quippy fun lines that they had mm-hmm. sort of tucked in throughout. Like it literally yeah. made me LOL from time to time. So well, that talks line. like normal humans. It yes. wasn't like they were just oogling over each other the whole time. It was like they were very snarky with one another, and snark is partially my love language, so I appreciated it. It's not for everybody, yeah. maybe, but it was yeah. funny. Which sort of contributed to their friendship actually turning into something more. Which yes. Is- very nice. So, bottom line here, who knew? Six gold? Couldn't have guessed that. That's the last happen. weekend of the season? Yeah. Homework. I mean, I get. I know why they put it this late, because what of what I just said, it's closer to New Year's. But I hope it gets some love still. I hope people are still watching. You de- guys definitely need to check this one out. Yeah, I would definitely recommend this one. This is probably certainly going to wind up being one of my favorites from the whole season at the end of the day. <laughs> And so six goal, we're going to call it, it checks all the boxes. Like we said, we loved it. We thought it was great. And that, friends, is another episode of Do You Watch What I Watch. Special thanks to Nick Schwarz for writing our theme song. And of course, to you for taking the time to listen or watch. Hey, if you like our podcast, check us out at doyouwatchwhatiwatch.com. You can leave a five-star rating review, subscribe, tell a friend. All of the things were on Facebook, Instagram, sometimes on Twitter if I remember to post over there. So mainly Facebook and Instagram. Leave us a comment. Connect with us. We do respond to all of your questions and comments. We are not big enough to have people that do that. You're talking to us directly. Direct line. Next time, we are back on the Hallmark Channel to recap and review Friends and Family Christmas. And here's the plot summary. Overwhelmed by Christmas events and a surprise visit from her parents, photographer Danny asks lawyer Amelia for help. Pretending to date is the perfect solution until real feelings develop. We're going to have much to discuss, but until then. May your days be merry and bright. Take care.